All right, uh, I didn't hear you, but I'll answer that question after a second. Um, so let's go and look at question number nine. Question number nine says, if the point three comma four lies on the graph of an invertible function f, then which of the following points lies on the graph of its inverse? So a couple things we need to remember. First of all, we have a coordinate point. Um, I think one of my stories I've told you guys is if you have a point, why don't we just graph it just to look at what it looks like? So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I do not know what the function looks like because it doesn't tell us what the function looks like. It just says this point is on this function. So, but it says it's an invertible function. And if it's an invertible function, that means, um, let's put that right there. That means we know something about it. Do you guys remember what we know about invertible function, at least the graph? It has symmetry. A, inver a function in its inverse has symmetry. Does anybody remember what it's symmetrical about? Y equals x. That was the line of symmetry. So my graph is like bad here. Well, that should be higher. Yeah, it should be higher. It should be up there. OK. Dun, dun. One, two, three. There we go. There we go. So here is my point, 3, comma 4. And there is my line of symmetry. Now, that doesn't really help us out, but hopefully you guys recognize. So if I'm going to reflect this about this line, maybe you can come up with the new point. Well, let's, first of all, if I, if I flip this across this line, am I still going to be in the first quadrant? Yes. Yes. So could we maybe eliminate some problems here, yeah. some answer choices? So we know first quadrant, everything's positive, right? Yeah. So from there, we're looking at A could be. B is not an answer. C could be an answer. D is not an answer. And E could be an answer because we don't know. We haven't figured out the point yet. Right? But we at least eliminated B and D. Pretty good, right? Multiple choice is good to eliminate answers that we know are not correct. Um, now the next thing is, so this maybe this could help you out, but maybe you might still be stuck. So do you guys remember algebraically? What was the, besides writing f of x in terms of y, what was the second step that we kind of worked on in doing inverses of functions? We're just flipping y and x, right? And that was the whole purpose of the symmetry. That is actually how you get the symmetry of the graph is swip, sw switching the x and the y coordinate. And we did that algebraically to find the inverse as well. So yes, the invertible point here is 4, 3. Or the point that's on the invertible function is 4, 3, which was answer A.